What's up, guys, and welcome to the Watch Star Watch Reviews with your host, TK. Uh, congratulations to my competition winner, Catter Hoffman, who unfortunately I spelt his name wrong, or his username wrong at least, in the last video. So, first thing first, an apology for that. Second thing, of course, is we have a review to do, and I'm going to be looking today at a Timex. So, it's one of the Timexes I actually recommended in my Christmas gifts last minute gift review, or review, I suppose, suggestion list would be more appropriate. And it's a great watch. I wouldn't have recommended it to you guys otherwise. I'm just going to go through the review, give you a look at the ups, the downs, what I like, what I don't like, and what exactly you can expect to get from the watch if you decide to purchase it. With that being said, let's get on with the review. All right, so as usual, if you're not already liked and subscribed, perfect time to do so now. On with the review. The box this one came in is just this basic Timex cardboard box, nothing special about it. Cost me about 50 euros. I'll drop an affiliate link down below. Inside you get the watch, which of course would be, wouldn't be much of a watch review if you didn't get one. And these little stands for Timex, they're plastic. And a little instruction manual, which you can see is still taped up. I haven't even taken it out. It's a fairly simple quartz watch, no need for instructions really. By the way, this is the Timex Expedition Scout in the green and black colour variant. It's just a couple of different other colours. Dimensions are as follows. You are looking at 40mm in diameter, 43.8mm at the crown. 49.2 millimeters lug tip to lug tip with a 20 millimeter lug width no taper on that strap it's about 10.6 millimeters thick uh, across the case and dial and it is just 64 grams of weight aided of course by this watch being a quartz not a mechanical or an automatic movement so specifications on this one well it is actually a brass case so not stainless steel so it is subject to corrosion however it's been coated in this protective gunmetal grey coating also the dial is covered by a piece of mineral glass dead flat mineral glass no uh, anti-reflective coating on it the band is a it's described as mixed material but i'm going to guess it's some sort of nylon composite with the timex expedition e stamped on the buckle again i would guess it's brass but it could be stainless steel i don't know to be honest, I have no way of telling, and it's not really mentioned in their tech specs, which is a bit unusual. If I open it up, you can see the case back, which is a basic pressed case back, along with a pull push crown, giving this 50 meters of water resistance. Stainless steel case back, it also tells you 20 millimeters lug width, which is handy if you've forgotten, and you forgotten, I should say, forgotten, and if you want to swap it out for a different strap. Also, this is a Timex quartz movement inside. Pull the crown out once, it allows you to set the date. Pull the crown out a second time, it stops the second hand of ticking like every other quartz and allows you to adjust the hands. Again, nothing to uh, set the world alight on this one in operation, but always handy to know and go through. And here it is out on my 7 inch wrist. So here it is on the original supplied nylon strap. Or I'm calling it nylon, but I honestly don't know. Um, it's fine. It, the strap is okay. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. It seems like it will be fairly rugged. It fits in with the field watch aesthetic. Side profile shot there to show you flowing down into my 7-inch wrist. It's fairly comfortable. It doesn't overtake your wrist. And it's a good size and it's easily, easily one of my more legible watches. However, if you want to fancy it up and you want to swap it out for something a bit better, here is a, uh, I'm just trying to remember where I got this one, this is a watch gecko, kind of desert sands colour, and it's good if you wanted to give it a desert field watch look. It's pretty nice on this one, I have to say, I'm surprised at how good it looked. And here it is on a watch gecko, uh, Jim Bond style Zulu Diver NATO. Pretty good on this one as well, it goes with the black and kind of gunmetal grey colour scheme in the case and on the dial. Very, very quick macro shot this week, guys, because nothing is applied on this one. It is all nicely printed, though, I must say. Timex Expedition there at the 12 o'clock position, and you have Indiglo WR 50 meters at 6 o'clock, color match date wheel at 3. Of course, that Indiglo function is something that we will be going through right about now. So let's take a look. Indiglo, well... You don't get a whole lot of loom on the hands. I didn't include too much of a loom shot for this one because I wanted to do the Indiglow. Indiglow is this sort of torch function. Push the crown in once and you get a burst of this lovely blue light. However, if you keep doing this, it will burn through your battery. So use it sparingly as much as you can. So time for likes and dislikes or likes and complaints, whatever you want to call it. First like is I really like the design of this watch. I do like that gunmetal grey, even if it is on top of a brass case. I'm okay with brass every now and then, to be honest. I have a lot of stainless steel watches that I can use for swimming, and this one just gives you something different, and I really do like the colour scheme on this one. Not so sure about some of the others, but still pretty good. That dial as well is really simple and really legible to read at any angle. 
I love the colors as well with it, the black and white, and then that pop of color off the yellow second hand. Easy to read inside, outside, in sunlight, in dark, no matter what you're doing. The Indiglow function is really cool as well. I will say that's something that I'd get a whole lot of joy out of doing. I probably shouldn't be doing it as often as I do because it will burn through the battery, but eh, I can change batteries myself and it's just so much fun to do. It's like a child with it. Also, if you take a look, I must say this watch for a quartz watch that's, you know, about the 50 euros mark, it does a pretty good job of either hitting the indices or looking like it hits all the indices. I On the macro, maybe it didn't look exactly like it did hit all the indices, but it looks from the real view like it does hit most of them at least. However, some of the dislikes are as follows. Full push crown and the push case back means that you only get the 50 meters of water resistance. I would like the 100 for a field watch, to be honest, would give you that extra reassurance of getting it wet. Also, it is a loud watch with the ticking. I'm going to see if I can push it up to the, uh, the, the microphone so you guys can hear this one. So the first sound you heard was it on my wrist and then the second sound was on a hard surface. It's much worse on a hard surface. Also, this strap is not great quality. It's fine to wear, but it's a bit scratchy. And you can see there, I've had this one for a few months and it's starting to fray a little bit. It's not the most flexible either. It's, it's okay, but it feels like one of those ones that it's just built to be durable. So there you have it, my review of the Timex Expedition Scout. A very nice field watch, but with a couple of small flaws, one of which you can correct very easily, the strap, and another one that's not so easy to correct, the water resistance. Honestly, if it wasn't for water resistance, I'd probably make this my top field watch to buy, but I think there's another heavyweight contender that we need to take a look at before we uh, crown the Timex, and I'll be doing that in the next week or two. And then might do a head-to-head -head on them and see which one comes out on top. I'm actually undecided on that. But uh, guys, thank you very much for watching. If you do want to pick up the watch, it is in the description below. It's an affiliate link. They don't cost you any more. Blah, blah, blah. As you've heard from every YouTuber under the sun, they don't cost you guys any more. They just pay a little commission to me. But guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been your host, DK. This has been the Watchtower Watch Reviews. And I will see you guys next time.